Now that you have downloaded R in R Studio, we'll practice some steps that might be part of your workflow in an analysis. We will practice creating a, a new script file, editing that script file with some very simple coding, uh, which will also run, um, saving that code, that is saving our script file, specifically to a location on our computer, so that when we close our R Studio session, we can go and reopen our script file from that folder on our computer. So let's create a new script file. Here is my RStudio window. I only have three panes here. You might have four if you were to open it up. I'm going to go to New File and create new R script. And so it opens up into this pane up above. I'm going to give myself some room here, several spaces. Notice that it went from untitled black without an asterisk to untitled red with an asterisk indicating that I have made some changes to the script and that I have not yet saved it. So what I'll do is write some simple script in here, like 2 plus 3, and um, I can actually run it as well. And this green arrow is my run. I also have a shortcut, control enter, or if it's on a Mac, command enter. And I can see the output in my console. 2 plus 3 is 5. I could do other functions too. 2 to the cube, 2 cubed, or 2 to the third. And I can run this. My cursor can be anywhere on the line, or it can highlight the entire thing, and it'll run and give me the result. If I only highlight a part of a line and run it, it will only give me that result. But if my cursor is anywhere on the line and it's not highlighting and I run it, it will give me the result of the entire line. Okay, so let's save our file. So we go to File, Save As, or we could just click our icon here and it's going to ask me where do I want it to go. I'm going to put it in my class and in a folder that I already created before called My R Work and um, I'll give it a, a name. I'll call it my first R file. My first R code, perhaps. Save it. And if we go to our folder, my class, my R work, I can see my file is listed there. That's the one that I just created. So let's get ready to close our R Studio session and pretend we'll come back to our code another day. And what I want to do is be sure that uh, the tab with my script file name shows that I have no unsaved changes and that I like the result, that I'm fine with it. So I see it is here it is black with no asterisk. Um, I could run the code one more time. You know, I can highlight everything and run it all at once. And so I see the uh, operations and their results. I like it. I'm going to close it and it's done. Now, Notice there's an R history file here. Um, you can ignore that. I usually don't even open those up. But maybe I come back the next day and I want to open up my file. So I go to my class and, you know, whatever your directory is on your computer. I just have to double click that and it opens up in R Studio because I have set my computer to open up anything that ends in the extension .r with R Studio but yours might not be set up that way. So what you need to do is, um, well, instruct your computer to do this. So you can right click, or I guess on a Mac, option click, and then you choose open with, and you have to choose, see mine is already used to it being opened with our studio, so this option is here, but yours won't be available. Um, you have to choose the application. So if you should be able to find RStudio in this list. If it's not, you'll have to find another way. In any case, when you do choose one, you need to be sure you click this box that says always use this app to open .r files. It's pretty much the same procedure on a Mac. And then you should say OK. By the way, if, if you don't know what your, let me close out of this. If you don't know what your extensions are, um, you can view them. So I'm on a PC and um, you can go to your view tab. This is just a file explorer. 
you might see a different layout for your uh, icons. You might see this, or tiles, or extra large icons, and so forth. I like the details because I can sort by the date modified and so forth. But here you can also click the box to show the file name extensions. And I believe there's an option that is similar on a Mac. So with that said, I'm going to open it up again. And here we are. This is the work that we did yesterday. Let's pretend that you know we wrote our code yesterday and we're opening it up the next day. And um, I can start off uh, where I ended. And all I have to do is run it and I see the result again.